Hello from Brussels again. We are in the European Parliament just a few days from a crucial European Council summit for a discussion here that uh, on the topic European governance and the political way ahead. Um, the EU is on the verge of something. The question now is what? Um, after a painful period of very difficult and intense work on the adoption of the six pack, that is the package of six proposals to reform the economic governance of the European Union, now the question is whether all these reforms are sufficient. There is um, also an intensive conversation whether we should talk about governance or government, and there are even concrete proposals to. Uh, one that came from France and Germany and the other that is coming from the European institutions. So um, the last week on the eve of the European Council, even European Commission President José Manuel Barroso uh, presented in the European Parliament an urgent proposal that includes, among other things, recapitalization of European banks, introduction of euro bonds that he calls stability bonds, and also significant treaty changes uh, to ensure deeper integration in the entire EU, treaty changes of which Germany also talked about. And against all this background, just a few days before the EU Leaders' Summit, we have gathered here in the European Parliament to discuss what is going on. Um, we have three representatives of the European Parliament from three of the largest groups in the European Parliament. So let us start in order of power with the largest group, the European People's Party, and Mr. Diogo Feio, who is from Portugal. Welcome and thank you for joining us. And Ms. Elisa Ferreira from the group of Socialists and Democrats in the European Parliament. Um, and Mr. Sven Giegold from the group of Greens and European Free Alliance, all of them members of the, Euro of the Economic and Monetary Affairs Committee. Um, and all, unfortunately, we were unable to ensure a representative of ALDE, uh, who are very vocal in talking about the economic uh, governance reform. So without any further ado, let us start of, um, with the question, what should we expect from this um, European Council? There is a high expectations of very crucial, even fateful uh, decisions. Mr. Feio, what do you think? Thank you. It's not easy to, to answer to that, to that question. I hope that the, this, this European Council goes in the good direction. Probably we should discuss a treaty change and uh, we need to begin this, this process in the good direction. And the good direction for me is more flexibility to the economies of the states more powers in the political sense to the Commission and probably, uh, if we need, a common system of economic governance in the Eurozona area. If it's governance not possible... Or government, this is now the question because there are a few ideas. I think it's not just a question of, of words. I think we need a, a direction. We need a political direction to the to the to these these issues and the states should understand that uh, probably now the sovereignty of the states is played not in the capitals but in brussels yeah. uh, and i think we need to to understand that because uh, we are generally in a uh, in a political of austerity in in the states of the European, the European Union. It is very difficult. I can talk, for example, in, about my country. We have now the, the most difficult uh, budget of the, of, the last, of the last years. But we need also a strategy of growth. We need uh, good public accounts, but we need growth. And to have growth, probably, we need some speciality of, of actions in the, in the states. Mm -hmm. I don't understand in Europe, and in, in Europe uh, if all the states are doing the same things. And we need to, to, to coordination. have coordination. Some kind of yes. coordination. And Ms. Ferreira, what, what are your personal expectations of this summit? Well, I think, I think the situation is, uh, is becoming more and more complex. 
as uh, we refused to address properly the issues when they started and something that could have been tackled when uh, Greece was the problem and uh, the whole process started. And we are talking about 2% of European GDP. Europe uh, and the monetary union have not an external global problem as the American economy has. We have an internal imbalanced problem with very specific aspects that related to the Greek problem. And uh, as we let time go without addressing in a very strong and, and, and intelligent way uh, the, the problems that uh, Europe is facing, we uh, let the problem grow and it's becoming more and more difficult to tackle. So it's very important that we, uh, that we realize that the old narrative in which the ones that are in trouble are guilty and they must be punished and the ones that are uh, doing okay and now it's I think it's just Germany and uh, Sweden and uh, two or three and uh, Austria probably but this that these countries that they are doing perfect because they are virtuous and that that destroys completely the capacity to address what kind of problems this political experiment that we are all in uh, what are their constraints? And one of them is that underlying this, you have on one hand very strong tensions that are caused by the fact that common policies, the same policies, impact differently in different realities. So the same exchange rates, rate of the euro fits German economy. It's absolutely disastrous for certain other economies. Uh, enlargement benefited Germany, but uh, uh, moved all the dynamics to the east of Europe and peripheral countries became worse, and these are just two examples. And second issue is that the monetary union doesn't have instruments to function. So when there is a crisis, these countries that have been growing in a poor di direction, such as the southern countries, they don't have room of maneuver to grow. And because we are in a monetary union, we let go all the normal instruments. We cannot devalue, we cannot increase uh, uh, expenditure, government expenditure, and the interest rate is, is, is an external variable. So what is the alternative? You have got to borrow to stimulate your economy, and it is because the crisis came from the financial sector that the capacity of different countries to react to it showed the weaknesses that were underlying. So why and are you saying that we, or at least the Eurozone, needs a government? This is something of which no. France and Germany talked about, and even uh, President Barroso t was talking about some kind of deeper integration involving treaty changes, which could mean exactly this. We need governance. We don't need a common government, because the words are misleading. We don't need a kind of uh, bossing of certain countries over others. So we don't need a common uh, finance we did, minister? We, we, yeah. we need, uh, before that, a political restatement of what kind of union we are working in. Because if we are um, not addressing properly and timely the tensions that are growing inside Europe, and we let things go into a dimension in which certain countries have a kind of a tutor power over other countries, then we are in trouble. And so this is the reason why it's very important that we understand that of course we have to reinforce our common economic management, but this has got to be accompanied by recognizing that we don't have a federal system. Either we, we build it, but for that we have got to readdress the political status of right. a federal system and to change a lot of things but we cannot through the economy uh, overlap the sovereignty issues of certain countries by having them in the hands of other countries because this is what the whole project of Europe tried to uh, to protect and to safeguard for good we have done it for 60 years but we have got to go over this crisis and restate things not on a moralistic basis, but on a technical basis. Let's hear from Mr. Giegold. What do you think? What are your expectations? And I'm asking you as also being a German, because Germany is playing down 
the higher expectations from the upcoming summit? Well, the German government is playing down. Um, I, I must say uh, we may not mix everything because I think we are in an urgent and dramatic uh, crisis. If you look at the economic fundamentals, uh, even uh, now in a deep recession in, in several European member states, the trade balance is not, uh, not normalizing. Portugal, Greece, Spain, France, not in recession yet in France, have ne strongly negative trade balances, which means nothing else, that they still need to indebt themselves, e even in such a situation. So uh, that means uh, even where in a situation where Germany is growing and uh, some other countries are growing and others are in recession, the situation does not rebalance. And, uh, and this is the real reason you called it economic uh, imbalances, why uh, there is so little trust in the banking system as well as in the ability of states to repay their debt and uh, under the framework of the euro as it's governed today. And that's the situation and it has to be addressed. And for this we cannot wait for philosophical discussion whether we need government, governance, treaty change. I do think that after the experience of the crisis we have to make institutional changes and a, a treaty change and we need to end up with a much more and closer economic governance system, which also includes some government, uh, government ideas. But, and there I understand very well what you are saying, if this would be misused, as the Prime Minister of the Netherlands is suggesting, to dictate the weaker states, economically weaker states, their policies, it will lose all democratic legitimacy. If we move to more economic uh, European decision-making, it has to be balanced by a redemocratization, which means a stronger European Parliament and strong democratic controls, otherwise it will not work. But, and that's my last sentence, now the, what the Council has to do, what the, the, the summit has to do, they have to deliver on Greece, they have to deliver on the banks, they have to toughen financial regulation and they have to come up with a social rebalancing. If they don't, we cannot dare to go to the citizens to suggest more power for, for the European level. If we do not solve the fundamental problems of today, we will have no legitimacy, not in Germany, not in Greece, not in Portugal, nowhere, because people losing trust, which is also the basis for a common currency. Without trust, we cannot hope to get out of the mess. Well, even President Barroso was talking about that the Union cannot any longer abide with the slower countries. So maybe he's, in a way, supporting the Netherlands' position that the stronger countries should dictate the rules. You don't agree with this? No, and I, I want to, to go back just to, to underline, for example, that, as Elisa said, we have different situations in the in the European Union, different states, but we have a common monetary policy. And to the states it's very difficult. For example, they can't now devaluate the, the, the devaluate and they can do some things that they 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 now are in the in different situations. But I, I just stress that uh, the, the, for me, the idea of economic uh, government is not the idea of a tutor power. I don't agree, for example, with this idea that in any European Council we need to have before a meeting between France and Germany to say what's, what's happened in the, in the days after. I don't agree with this, with this idea. I think it's, it's very, very important, for example, that the other countries of the Eurozone of the Eurozones have common positions about, about these, these issues. And I think we need to, 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 to have two to ideas. One, to the, to the short time, we need to, to have actions to the states, to the sovereign debt. We have to need actions to the banking system and we need a, a strategy to the growth. But yeah, we but have also, but, sorry, but we have also the questions of the long time. And in the long time... And obviously that's what the markets want. 
a long a long term strategy of which obviously we don't have any time. I think that the market wants the two things, and yeah, the, the, the no European time for anything more. And, maybe. and I think that the European leaders should understand that we need some actions to the short times and other ones to the long time, and we need to begin now with the, the, the measures to the, to, the, to the long time. And I don't know if well, uh, this should be. all Is the, the people... Is the six-pack sufficient for the short term? No, no, it's, no? Uh, no to the, 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 the six-packs, the six-pack is just a, 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 small, a small step. We need others. We need yeah, to discuss the question of, of the... No, yes. Less. Yes, and uh, I think one of the things that we need change is the time of decisions in the European institutions, for example. And President Barroso was talking about this unanimity rule that should be skipped in a way so that time is uh, well, safe. Yeah, I, di I didn't understand uh, the message by, by Barroso in the sense that you were saying that uh, he was supporting that countries that go slow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he was uh, referring to slow decision process or blocking the decisions. Yeah. What Slovakia, uh, what blocking decisions, with which is not exactly the same thing. Slovakia is not a, a, a country under, under with the, program. with programs. Yeah. So that's not that's not let's not make a parallel between the two things because I think that was not the message. Uh, secondly, I think uh, we are always trying to please the markets, and I think what the markets want is to make money. So if there is a, a room of maneuver in the in the in the, the valuation of the CDSs or in the 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 borrowing costs of a country, of course there is a room of maneuver to buy and sell. So uh, let's not let's not. Uh, uh, fiddle ourselves by trying to please the markets. Uh, the but other, we are dependent on the yes, markets. we are dependent on the markets because we didn't take sufficiently seriously the idea that we cannot give preference to saving banks in alternative to saving countries. I mean, now we have uh, we have 4.6 trillion euros invested to save to safeguard uh, financial institutions. That's, that's the figure that was mentioned by, by President Barroso. It's not my own figure. It's 4.6 trillion euros that were engaged into saving the financial sector. So, and now we are saying again, let's save the banks. Right. Okay, from my point of view, we should have worked on a failing structure, a framework to address failing banks in which the shareholders should be the first to be penalized and the taxpayers should be the last mm -hmm. to be charged for helping banks. And on the other hand, it would have been better to have a common management of sovereign debt, even if it is just a common emission of bonds with preset prices and yields that could be organized among the different member states uh, and that would not require a treaty change. But of course, Portugal would uh, go to the markets with a preset price for its borrowing, uh, different from Germany. And we could settle internally our different, uh, our, the different calculations. But we should have gone to the market with a common presentation of sovereign bonds. And if we think that by uh, addressing again and reinforcing again banks, uh, without understanding that we have created here two vicious circles, one is that we have recommended recessionary me measures to everybody across Europe. So, of course, if Portugal or Greece or if we export let's say 70% or 60% of our exports are to Europe, we are influencing each other and we are creating a negative spiral. The other issue is the connection that we have made between banks and countries. So now you want countries to borrow from banks or from the financial right. markets in general, but then you are telling them that they, they will have an haircut if they lend to that country. And simultaneously, you have countries to be the ones that are asked to refinance banks. If the, if the French banks go down, then you ask the French government to support them. But if the French government supports them, 
the supports them, the French government will be down, the French debt will be downgraded. Right. And all the, so we are creating two spirals, one on banks and countries, and one, the, the, the other one on recessionary me measures all over. So this is absolutely absurd. On the six pack, I think it's not for short term, because the six pack is supposed to work when everything goes back to, to, to normal. And it may help, but it still needs a growth and convergence dimension that the left in general in the parliament has been claiming for and it's it's not existent at all and it's only proposed in words not in practical initiatives okay so we are talking about treaty changes in the same time we're talking about avoiding treaty changes that they might not be needed but what it, should it be i mean the markets are reacting very uh, sharply exactly to this um, inconsistent conversation. Do we need treaty changes or do we not? Uh, to be honest, I would first like to respond to this analysis because I feel that's uh, that's the key question. So uh, we have several countries going down uh, and uh, in a negative spiral, and at the same time, uh, now we have proposals uh, for the banking system not to to be bailed out by states which then will go down when, uh, as soon as they do it. And it will not work. And I think there are practical solutions to that. And I think about this we have to, these problems we have to address first. So first, there has to be, on the, there has to be a banking recapitalization. But uh, first, there must be liability of the owners of today. So then if states go into the banking system, they must take over voting uh, right-based uh, shares so not again loans guarantees and the like but taking control of the um, of the banks and then uh, using that in order to make sure that the deleveraging of the banks will not be done by harming the real economy by reducing giving credit but that it will be done uh, by limiting uh, the trading and investment banking activities but this has to be financed and I fully agree with you uh, differently than what has been proposed now by Barroso. It cannot be financed by the member states because uh, if it's financed by the member states we get into these problems. Second, there may not, it must be done quickly. Uh, if uh, Germany proposed to let first the member states search for the money and, f and before that the, the banks search for the money. If we give them months to search for money it will be a turmoil uh, on the financial bank, on the financial markets for the valuation yeah, of the banks. Finance it? it must be financed through the EFSF uh, as soon as it's fully operational. It has to do this and it has to do this based on money which doesn't come from the budget of the states. Otherwise we do not break uh, the, the spiral. I personally believe in the end it, it, it has only one institution which is still able to act and that's the ECB. As a German, I must say, I dislike that deeply. I think it's, uh, it's against my convictions, but seeing from a realist perspective, there's nobody else to get us out of this spiral. Mm -hmm. The financial market will not deliver the money, the states cannot deliver the money, and therefore the only one still left in town is the ECB. So uh, this is, a, uh, and it, but this can only be justified for the citizens if at the same time we prevent the banks going into this unethical behavior again. Therefore, there must be control. I'm not for a state-run banking system. I don't want to be understood. But when you give public money, there must be public control. And the second point is, it's not enough to cut the debt of Greece. There must be, at the same time, an expansionary green investment program in the southern states, not any growth. Uh, this is uh, but uh, something which delivers for jobs and development. And if there's not, Portugal, Spain, Italy, they will not get out of the trouble and uh, Greece will, not, uh, will neither. And uh, the council, if the council fails to deliver on that because Germany is saying, no, we don't want that, uh, then we, can, uh, we do not have to discuss about uh, treaty changes because the euro will fall apart uh, quicker uh, then we debate about articles in a new treaty. That's uh, sorry for reacting so bluntly, but I think uh, 
I think we are really in such a serious situation. Yeah, the situation is very serious, especially when you uh, mentioned Greece. This is a very itchy issue, given uh, uh, the Troika report, which actually says that Greece is not abiding with the, its commitments. And at the same time, there is a need that it be bailed out again. So what should be done? Because the European Union is in a very uh, unpleasant situation where its commitments are not being performed and at the same time it has to give more money to Greece. I think we need, I think we need to support Greece and Greece should comply with the, the, we're the agreements. we're talking about this for a year now and Greece is not complying and not complying and needing money. Okay, but... Excuse me. We, I, I really object to this. Uh, the Greek people are suffering enormously. They have imposed uh, tough measures uh, in comparison to what any other state in Europe did in reform measures. Uh, nobody managed uh, to reduce that is public spend. True, yeah, but but, but you were saying needs. they are not. You were saying yes, they are not doing, not doing. Not doing. No, sorry, sorry. There are people. There are forty percent of young people unemployed. There are twenty. Uh, there are twenty percent unemployment. There is. Uh, there is loss of economic activity, and there one one can complain, legitimately, that the government has not implemented one by one. But before saying that, one has to say that Greece is paying a high price. And it's very clear, it's at the moment not Greece being bailed out. Who's bailed out are the ones who gave the money to Greece. So the Greek people have not received anything. They, what, what they, who has received the money are the banks uh, and other investors who gave the money to Greece. Obviously, this is a, a, against the spirit of the euro. Then what One are has you to suggesting? be suggesting? What should be done? What are you oh, I said there must be a deeper haircut so that uh, that Greece is able again yeah, but to pay and, le and second. Agree. They've already signaled that well, they wouldn't. We will agree. see. Uh, in the end, they had to agree with many of uh, similar measures in other countries. What can make so, them agree? Yeah, please. please. I, sorry. I, I think that, as I said, the, the Greece also needs time because the structural reforms don't have result in the in the short time. Right. They they, yeah. they need time to have to have results, the same thing in Portugal, but I want to stress that um, to have a, a stable growth, the, the states need good public accounts. Uh, if you see states with good public accounts are, are growing and growing and growing well. And um, it's very, very important to states like Portugal, Greece, Ireland, Comply with the, the agreement, with the, with the grid, because with this with this compliance, the states are giving confidence to the to the markets and confidence right. to the to the political leaders, and all are saying are saying are saying that. And I think we need to discuss also the the growth strategy, yeah. uh, and we need measures to the to the to the growth strategy. And I don't think that the the special, special measure will be more public investment. I think we need a, a good environment to the, to the companies. The companies are the, the, the engine to, to, the, to the growth. We need uh, um, cut some bureaucracy. We need to have an, a global strategy to the green investment to the, right. to the companies. We need some some small measures but efficient measures to the growth of the of the states in a, an idea of a general way and solidarity between the states because the states are not equal in the European Union. Yeah, if I may add something. Um, when we address Greece, I think you don't have to be a PhD in economics to understand that the first recipe that was given to Greece, it's just punishment. That's not help. That's punishment. You cannot do anything if you have to pay back. Uh, you have a three-year or five-year period to make structural, serious reforms. And if you borrow money at uh, almost 6%. So this, this is absurd. I mean, you didn't ha we didn't have to have gone through a first uh, program of help and then a second program of help. And this is the reason why I think it's very important that politically we get out of this kind of scheme in which you have uh, the moralistic right to punish countries. Because uh, you are not punish 
punishing a government, you are punishing the people. Yes, but uh, the same thing as Mr. Giegold was talking about, the uh, people of Greece, there are also the people of Germany, the people of uh, Slovakia, they were also saying we did so much things and it was so hard for us to join the Eurozone and now we have to bail out Greece. So there are different peoples that also have their Okay, but the reasons. evaluation of ETS it is true, but the evaluation of who gains and who loses by the functioning of the common currency and the common market is not, there is a global gain, but the sharing of that gain, gain the sharing of the gain that you get is not equal all over. Let's, let's face it. If you have the exchange rate at the level of, uh, 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 that it is, the exchange rate that it used to be, of the exchange rate vis-à-vis -vis the dollar and the, the Chinese currency, that favors financial markets and that favors high technology exports. Right. But it doesn't favor other exports. So it, it is not, if you, if you put, if you, if you have a bid for a supply of electricity in a very competitive open market, it will be the top suppliers the one that, that will have the tendency to win. So we have got to understand that if, that if we politically decide to get together, putting in very competitive and strong economies together with weak economies, you have got to organize yourself in such a way that you don't enlarge the divergences between these economies right. and the outcome of the, of the uh, it was the commission that published the report 10 years after the functioning of the euro and the conclusion was that the functioning of the common currency had created very, very strong divergent trends in the economy all over Europe. So now we are living with the consequences of these increased imbalances uh, from that, that are a normal consequence. We knew this. We knew this in the last time. It doesn't help you know? that we knew this, actually. No, 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 but it, it helps in one sense that we should not move from a political agenda into a kind of moralistic agenda in which, okay, you are in trouble, okay, you need to be penalized and you have to have sanctions. That is not the solution. But in the same time, we have national interests prevailing over the European ones that you're talking about. What do you mean in, in the Greek case? No, about, yeah. well, the Greek case, it concerns every country that it's yes, participating. Yes, it, it, con it concerns out. every country. Yeah. But you, if you really want to get Greece and other countries out of the situation, you have got to take a careful look of what you need to change. I welcome that now, apparently, the Commission sent a task force to help to change things. If you, are not, if you don't have a sophisticated and efficient uh, fiscal uh, or tax collection structure, you right. cannot do it in one year. You have got to take, it takes two years and probably you have to have money to sack people, to buy computers, yeah. to reorganize the whole thing. So if, if really you are serious and you really want to help these countries that are lagging behind to overcome their fragilities, you have got, first of all, to understand what these fragilities are and then to have a time span and some technical support like you do when you are dealing with the IMF. In a way, I would prefer to deal directly with the IMF, and I know that this is not political correct, but the IMF is an institution. You don't have to deal with all the members of the IMF. You don't have the national interests inside the IMF, and you are able to reorganize a 10-year plan with sufficient support and with serious, serious, uh, um, uh, issues and we did that in Portugal it was really the IMF at that time was a very very liberal kind of, uh, of institution but with with lots of discussion we managed to implement that pay, that but that was an institution it's not a mixture of countries that are con trying to control you and imposing you and of course you may always say that very, that very, okay very, very uh, short uh, because uh, uh, Sven okay. wants to come okay, in okay. on this. Okay, just, but, very, very just, just a detail, you may say that the Greeks have signed, but yeah. if you are hanging, you'll sign. I mean, <laughs> very, was that the room for discussion? Very, very shortly. I, I agree with the, this idea that it's, it's better to negotiate with an institution. And that's why I think we need a, a, a change of the, of the treaties. But, for example, in the case of Portugal, we are paying the high interest rates to IMF, not to the, to the European, to well, the the European Commission. The difference is very small. 
but it's a difference. But it's a difference. It's and very small. just just to finish, I think we we can't see this this question as a, a question against Greece. I think if Greece lose all the space. Uh, all the, the thing space is lose. whether the European citizens at large understand this, because, like I mentioned before, that national interests seem to prevail over European ones. So national politics is is struggling but with that's this. That's the duty of yeah. politicians. No. Yeah, true. I, I I would like to make one point and then uh, coming to this because it seems to me the heart of the problem. So I think many Germans, what they feel is the following, and I would like to take that up. They, they feel after the currency was created, a lot of German capital was flowing into as Dutch, as Austrian, as Finnish capital, was flowing to the countries which had less capital. It was flowing on very low interest rates and helping potentially the countries to develop. What happened in the countries? The countries consumed this money in, co in form of, con of buildings and also consumption credits and so partly also in government debt. So uh, now the countries are over indebted or at the margin of being over indebted. And, uh, and of course many Germans are now very concerned will this money ever go back and was it properly used in the countries? And we have to say on a balance sheet Germany had as a profit from the common currency these huge export surpluses which created jobs in Germany. The southern countries got cheap loans which they didn't use very effectively and people are angry about this. One has to say that the rules of the euro to allow all the countries to use the money in such a way that was a common rule. So we had only very few rules also because of the resistance of Germany to have an economic government at that time. As we didn't have that, there's now a guilt which we have to share. So that we cannot simply blame the southern states as it's often done in the German public, but I'm very sensitive also to listen that I think it's important that in the southern states people understand that these hundreds of billions of euros were not used effectively and that the different governments were not making sure that the money is used in order to increase capa productive, productive capacity, which didn't happen mm -hmm. enough. So, but now on the solutions. Now we are in this common mess. I fully agree with you. It's mm -hmm. not helpful to now negotiate who is guilty. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the situation we are having in Germany. People finger point and in Greece they finger point mm -hmm. to Germany and say they are now uh, ruled everything again. I must say uh, this doesn't help us at all and what would help us is to over that the different member states now have to say we agree to a strategy where everybody puts aside his privileges and I think there are four key privileges. Germany and some others want to defend their export surplus which is not workable. Uh, the southern states they uh, have still problems to impose clear rules on the development of wages in line with productivity, not going beyond as you did, uh, as some states did before, and to over indebt. Both has to end uh, effectively. The six pack, the economic governance has helped in this respect, but this must be credible. Stopping excesses in some parts of Europe. Third, there are the tax havens. They prevent us all together from balancing our budgets. So we cannot allow Luxembourg, Austria, Ireland to go on like that. There must be full cooperation and we must impose some taxes on capital income and I think on wealth in order to rebalance the budget. And fourth, we cannot allow the financial sector uh, uh, to be lax in, in, and be regulated and supervised in a laxist way because uh, we will, uh, otherwise we will have great difficulties explaining to citizens that we will have to stabilize them again. So all the countries have to give a few privileges in order for the common good. And we have to move with this now and we have then to build the institutions, as you were saying, to do this in a democratic way. If we don't, if we don't, I'm sure uh, we have a huge problem to get out of the mess mm -hmm. because everybody tries to defend its national interest and we are losing uh, in the end the euro which is the most expensive decision you can take in Europe. Mm -hmm. It's a disaster and it will, uh, it will be very expensive politically for the European dream and economically for the stability of, our, uh, of all our economies. So you think that it would be more expensive to lose the euro than to save it, is that correct? 
Well, it, it, I know a calculation from German economists that's saying the total cost of stabilizing is, is, is estimated at 1,000 billion and the cost of destabilizing is 8,000 billion. And eight, this is an enormous amount of money. What you, the figure from Barroso of 4. the 4.3 yeah. was only taken risks. It was not costs. That's right. Yes. So, uh, and these 8,000, I'm talking about costs, it's in tremendous, it's, it's nearly, it's, it's, one, it's more than one third of total GDP of, of, of uh, Europe. And therefore, uh, this is something nobody can risk. And therefore, we must stop finger pointing, stop, uh, stop basically pursuing our national interest and serving our, our national publics and say, look, we all have to uh, deliver now for stabilizing the euro. And it must be just, otherwise we will not sell it to our citizens. But if we don't, I think game is soon over. That's and the situation. Just uh, to finish, do you believe that the EU leaders will be that bold, as you're saying, to take such decisions? Well, that's a big question for him, because uh. it's your governments mainly. <laughs> it's yeah. mainly your no, governments, yeah. not your personal ones, no. but in your political group. No, but uh, it is true that the um, Commission, Council, uh, and Parliament, they are nominate, uh, dominated by, by a, a liberal majority. So it's really, I right. mean, the, there is no obstacle. To, there has been no obstacle to, 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 the, to, their, uh, to their ideas and to their way to, 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 to solve or not solve issues. So it's the time to find out how far and how good they are. I think we need, <laughs> we need decisions. I think we need clear decisions. Uh, I have some doubts about this this way that uh, Sven uh, supports because I think we need to to um, to have some measures to the directly to the to the companies directly to the engines of the the, the growth in the in the right. real economy. The generators in the really, of growth. No, uh, yes, agree. it's not only a, a public question. I agree. And I think we need. Uh, strong decisions to the future we need to to have uh, some measures to the short time and other ones to the mm -hmm. to the long times but we need to do this now and uh, we can use a, a word of the other side of the atlantic i think yes we can <laughs> Okay, um, we should leave it like this. A lot of expectations, a very heavy burden for EU leaders. And as the G20 ministers also said, very decisive measures are expected from EU leaders on Sunday. Thank you for being with us. Bye-bye.